something. You know, I get five or 600 emails a day. Thank you very much for all the emails you send me. Please don't be offended if you don't get a response back from me. I just don't have the time. And I, 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 I'm, I don't want to do automatic responses. I think that's offensive to you and uh, to do that. And I also think that, you know, to hire somebody, have somebody just sit for, you know, eight hours a day and answer emails with their voice, not my voice. I think that's offensive too, so I just don't do it. But I want to let you know, and I will every chance I get when I do my videos, thanks very much for taking the time to write me. I do respond to some, and some of you are quite surprised when I do. You you can't believe it. But I get a lot of, in the emails that come in, I get asked all kinds of things. People want to know everything about my life. Um, and uh, since I'm sitting here off to the side of my gym, I thought that I would... Uh, address one of the um, more abundant line of questioning or inquiries I get, and that's about exercise and working out. Every, people wanted some detailed information about my workout program today, what it was like when I was bodybuilding, what it was like when I was a young kid getting started, what it was like when I was in the business. People want detailed information about my eating habits, how I stay disciplined to eat good, healthy food, and stay lean. And, um, you know, I... I don't think I mentioned it any place, but a couple weeks ago, I did an interview with Zach Evanesh over at the Underground Strength Coach. We got on the phone, we talked for a couple hours, and I don't think that we really got around to what we intended to get into, meaning specifically exercise and nutrition type of stuff. We got into a lot of great topics, and uh, there's a lot of great takeaways in it. I know he's posted it in two pieces over there on the subscriber side. And when we first did it, he said, let me know when you want the audio. I'll get it to you. I'll reach out to him. I'll get the audio, and you guys can listen to it, too. Enjoy it up here at One Warrior Nation. But <clears throat> because we didn't get into that stuff, I can talk about that stuff occasionally on the videos that I do for a couple minutes and try to narrow it down to something. And for today, what I want to do is narrow it down to this. I get a lot of emails from <clears throat> all, a wide range of ages. But what I, a sense that I get from a lot of you young guys out there is an anxiety that you have about your working out and exercising. And you shouldn't have that. It should be an absolute blast. It should be fun. It should be enjoyable that you ha get this, um, you know, for lack of a better word, luxury to be able to work out, to have the time in your lives to go and do something that um, is of a positive benefit to the quality of your life. <clears throat> You know, my intensity is over the top, and like I do my injection of inspiration videos, they happen at the end of my workout. I don't go through my whole day different than people like to think. I don't go through my whole day with that ultimate warrior level of intensity on. I mean, my enthusiasm about everything I do is intense, but uh, that kind of over-the-top intensity comes out in my workouts, and I enjoy it. And I know I have said in a previous video, injection of inspiration video, I think the one where I said, my passion is fucking passion. I said something about getting angry, summons, summoning, summoning, summonsing up an anger if you have to, to get yourself to do the things that you need to do that are good for your life. But my intensity is not synonymous with anger. It's absolute pure joy. It's a blast for me to be able to go into the gym and exercise with that kind of intensity, man, to just be one with my body and the, 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 the heartbeat, the racing of my blood through my body, the pumping of blood through my body, the sweating, the warmth, um, the engagement of my mind in the exercises into the muscle, what I'm doing, what I'm trying to achieve, the challenges being put forth by the weights. I mean, like I said, they, you know, <laughs> I've had a lot of experiences in my life, but the weights, the cold dead still has never been unfaithful to me. I mean, it's always there ready for the challenge, and it will give back as, <clears throat> as much as you give to it in your uh, concentration, being caught up in it. And what I get from these emails, because of the information that you're providing to me is, uh, from the information that you're providing me, is you're thinking too much about the small, you're giving too much attention to the small things that don't really matter, and you're not giving enough attention to the big, um, broader, more basic things that do. 
I mean, you're telling me that you're in the gym and you're caught up in, you know, are your workouts going to suffer? Or are you not going to make progress because you don't have the latest supplement that's out there? Um, you, you don't have your, you forgot your sports bottle with your sports drink. You didn't get all the meals in that day that you wanted to get. You only got seven hours sleep instead of eight hours sleep. And what you've done is you've been misled, which is, you know, that's easy. It's easy for that to happen today because of so much misinformation out there and so many people pounding their chest, the alleged gurus and experts pounding their chest who have no real world experience um, with the things that they're talking about. You know, science has come a long way, yes, but there are some things science can't explain. And this whole idea that you need to have, you know, carry a cooler around all day and have meals every three hours, you got to have seven, eight, nine hours sleep. You got to have this kind of rest before you go to the gym. You got to have this meal three hours before you go to the gym. You got to take this supplement 15 minutes before you go to the gym. At intervals during your workout, you got to take this. You got to do this. Uh, you got to be aware that you don't that you work out hard, but you don't work out too intense because if you do, you'll overtrain. You need to be cautious of all that stuff. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. And I know that from my real world experiences. The best shape that I've ever been in in my life, the, the, the biggest gains I ever had with my body, having done powerlifting, bodybuilding, having done it all, is when I was on the road at the peak of my career for five, six year span, and slept an average of three hours a night, and sometimes went two or three days just eating tuna fish out of the can. And you need to get, you need to break this habit that you have, because it's creating an anxiety that's having a negative effect on your progress overall. To get the most progress out of what you're doing in the gym, which is most important, I mean, I've said before, I get emails from young people asking me, Warrior, which is most important? to buy my supplements and take the supplements or go to the gym. Not and or, or. Meaning some of you out there believe that it's more important to buy the uh, the supplements you see advertised in the muscle mags by the, by the bodybuilding guys. That's more important than even having a gym membership or buying an Olympic set and put it in your garage and making sure you work out every night. That's absurd. And when you go to the gym, first of all, I, I work out in my barn. I set up my own gym, but I've, I've been to commercial gyms. I travel, I go into gyms. I don't see anybody working out like people used to work out, like I remember. Like some of the gyms I used to go to where people would, they would do the fundamental exercises, deadlifts, squats, <clears throat> military presses, bent over rows, those type of things until they bled out of some orifice. I mean, it's... Um, People don't train the same way today. They train in little groups, little clans, four or five guys. You take five or six minutes between sets. You yak the whole time. You do text messaging. And your, your conversation and your inner dialogue is about why you're actually in the gym doing the most important thing you need to do to have progress in weight training, to become strong or build up your body or become um, – more capable in your athletic endeavor, more a, a better athlete out on the on the field, you're in your mind. You've got the, all this inner dialogue, this busyness going on. That you know, I didn't do this today. I didn't get my meal. I'm a half chicken breast short of the protein, the grams of protein I should have by now. I didn't eat the right amount of carbs. It's it's no good, and you need to dump it. Look, the most powerful supplement that you will ever have, all of you, no matter how much money you got to go buy the stuff, no matter how much money you have to pay personal trainers, the most powerful tool you will have to succeed with your working out, your exercising, your training, whatever you want to label it or call it, um, to and whatever your goals are, whatever you want, the most powerful tool is your fucking mind. You give me a guy who's got the mindset that it doesn't matter if he didn't eat. That's fine. Let's go to the gym. Let's kick ass. You give me a guy who's got the mindset, oh, I didn't get any sleep last night, but it's time to work out. Let's go to the gym. Let's kick ass. You give me a guy like that who isn't thinking about those things, but gets to the gym and becomes one, one 
One time I, I did a post on the working out and the exercising talking about that overtraining is bullshit and some of the fitness, online fitness gurus picked it up and I made a comment about <clears throat> putting your mind inside the muscle you're working. I mean, putting it in there, zoning in on it, getting inside the muscle, seeing it. One of the best things you can do is be able to imagine what your body looks like what, without skin to understand the anatomy of the body. Because when you're doing certain exercises and you're, you're, the muscle is extending and it's contracting, you want to know what that looks like. You want to be able to put a visual of that in your mind. And then tap into that and be there when you're doing your exercise, not thinking about stupid, silly shit. And here's the other thing. <clears throat> to have anxiety over, you know... You didn't get as much protein today. You didn't get as much sleep as maybe you should have. Those type of things. What does it fucking matter? What does it matter? Do you think any, it really matters when the summer comes? You go to the beach, people are saying, man, if he hadn't done that the three or four times he did it over the last three months in his training, with his training and his eating, he'd be at uh, point, uh, 165 less body fat. You think anybody... It, is looking at you and is going to pick up on the fact that if you've done this and this and this, got more protein, got more carbohydrates, done this different, done that different, that you'd be benching 40 more fucking pounds. Nobody cares. Why are you caring about it? The truth is most of you guys that are even in sports right now, you young guys, three or four years from now, when you get out of, get out of, <coughs> of high school or if you're in college, get out of college, you're going to go on, you're going to get hooked up, you're going to get married, you're going to have kids, you're going to get a job, you're going to have other responsibilities. You're not even going to go to the fucking gym anymore. You're not going to go because you don't have it up here to begin with to fucking go long term. You're not in for the long haul anyway. And you're certainly not in. Sorry to tell you, you're certainly not in for becoming a champion. Because champions don't buy into that kind of stupid, silly shit. Champions know it fucking happens here. Switch on, switch off. Switch on, switch off. Fuck the outside, the exterior conditions. It all happens internally, and they know that inside the fucking mind. You give me a guy who fucking has got that right, he will kick the fucking crap out of the guy who's in the fucking gym six or seven hours a day carrying his fucking cooler, three or four personal fucking trainers, all the functional training equipment and everything else. Give me the guy who's got it fucking here. I mean, that's anabolic, man. That's anabolic. You want growth hormones? Fucking challenge yourself. Step up, rise up to the fucking challenge. That's growth hormones. Don't fucking step down to meet somebody else's silly ass fucking standard that it's not backed up by fucking any real world experience. Go to the fucking gym, get yourself a set of the fundamentals, exercises, which is easy to find out. Use your fucking mind. That's another thing. And I say this in my start kit. You will never not be learning. You will always be learning and you always be starting over. The greatest fucking champions that have ever been still. Dorian Yates, Mr. Olympias, all the great, incredible athletes. They don't stand in the mirror and say, my work is done. They say the work begins tomorrow anew with new knowledge. I start all over again. That's why they're fucking champions. That's why they're champions. If you don't enjoy, that's one of the things that's been a staple of my exercise and working out from day one. I fucking love it. I love it. Other than spending time with my family, being in the gym, getting jacked up, being intense, being in control of my body, having that self-discipline, being able to make that mental connection to my fucking body, what it does for my soul, that is fun, man. And if you're not having fun with your exercise and working out, then don't fucking do it. You know why? Because nobody else gives a fuck. Nobody else gives a fuck. And you can spend your life with other people who don't give a fuck. 
the group of the, we don't give a fuck about ourselves. They're always going to be out there to spend, you know, <laughs> to spend their lives with one another. But don't have this anxiety about your exercising and working out and your training and your eating to the point that it's fucking just lunacy. It's a lie. It's a lie. You don't need the whey proteins. You don't need it. Uh, a, a gallon of milk's got 128 grams of protein. A gallon of milk would do you, what, four or five dollars? I know my wife does it grocery shopping. That will do you much better than a fucking 60 dollar jar, five gallon jar of, of whey protein. Drinking the fucking milk. Do the squats. Do the deadlifts. Do the military presses. Bent over rows. Deadlifts. Do those kind of things. Chin-ups. Learn how to do chin-ups. Chin-ups and push-ups. Do those. And put yourself on a progression program where you use the weights you can, say for <clears throat> five sets of each exercise. Uh, start with a weight you can get for five reps. Work your way up to eight reps. When you get to eight reps, go back, add weight, and just keep back and forth. Start again. Starting over. Starting over. Over and over again. Learning, learning, learning. And the most important thing you can do, this is the most important thing you can do. I said it the other day in one of my videos that I don't have 10 rules for success. And I don't. You may, in your life, you may have 103.5 rules for success. I don't know. But you need to learn for yourself. You need to discover that for yourself. You have this fucking thing up here, man. It's a brain, a mind. It gives you the ability. When people ask me, he says, how is it that I have the ability to go out and do something unique or great because you have this fucking mind and you can learn anything. There's not anything you can't learn. If you make the time and effort to sit down and learn it. But if I was to make a list of things, and I'm always amazed by how many people, especially the people on the internet, which cause the greatest amount of confusion, come up with their list. 50 ways to kick ass in life. 50 ways to kick ass in life? You weren't kicking ass in life while you were making the fucking list. Give me a break. And most people today are falling for that kind of bullshit. It's silly. If there was one thing to put on the list, the most important thing towards being successful at anything you do, it would be to pay attention. And especially so when you're in the gym and you're working out. Shut it down. Put a bubble around yourself. A bubble, <clears throat> a field around yourself that blocks everything out in such a way that if you were in Times Square on New Year's Eve, in the middle of that fucking crowd, you wouldn't even be aware that they're there. Considering... Drugs, you hear about your friends taking drugs, taking steroids and stuff. That's a steroid right there, man. That's a steroid there. To be able to have that kind of folk to draw everything in, man, that is powerful. That's what you need to be able to do and listen to your body, man. Because it will talk to you. It will talk to you. And will tell you exactly what to do. You don't need to pay attention to other people. Every single person watching this video, I don't care what your life is like. I don't care what the past has been up till now. The past is not the rest of your story. Every single person out there right now has the ability to do that. To learn for themselves. People ask me all the time, say, Warrior, don't you ever just feel like you don't want to? Don't want to do something? I mean, what kind of fucking question is that? Of course I do. I'm human like everybody else. But what I've done and what you can do is you can develop your self-discipline, make it strong in a way where you don't take shit from yourself. You know, not taking shit from other people is one thing. 
but having the integrity in your self-discipline not to take shit from yourself, now that's strong. I don't let any space get between me knowing I have to do something because it's going to be good for my life, it's going to better my life, and my mind start making up excuses why I can get away with not doing it. As soon as that starts to happen in your mind, you need to scream out, fuck you, I, fuck you. You say to yourself, you're, my, you're, my, you're going to tell me, you're going to try to talk me out of doing what I know is good for me, makes me a more powerful human being that means something to the quality of my life. You're going to try to talk me out of it? Fuck you! This is how I'm going to punish you. And when it comes to weight training, those type of things, you can't get up early and go to the gym. You can't make it happen that way. And when you come home at night, you're tired, you've had a long day, blah, 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 blah. The last thing you need to do is go by home, take a shower, sit and eat. Warriors, Warrior Man here. My final communication before I head out, get up to New Jersey for the Legends of the Ring convention this weekend. And a couple other killer awesome activities i got going on. Catching a final workout here in my warrior barn before I go. Actually, I've been doing some training over the last few weeks. No, not, not over training. Training over. Training over the punk ass, sissy ass, pussy ass over training theories put forward by pansy ass personal trainers who have never in their whole lives, put one good hard fuck up on the scoreboard. I mean, there are so many, 99.9% .9 of the personal training people, people selling their e-books and stuff, are just of that kind. I cannot read an article about overtraining or burning out your central nervous system without my fucking estrogen levels going up. It's absolutely pathetic. By the time I get done reading all the science, I want to go get a brawl and a dress. I figured that with recently being injured and having to really pay serious attention to my training that it would be a good time to do a test, perform an experiment on an old man, the old warrior man. So for the last 18 days, I've been hitting it hard. Every single day, intensity at 100%, not letting up on anything, each body part three times a week. And what was revealed to me is the same thing that gets revealed to me in the last 42 years that I've been training that way. My gut instincts, following my intuition, listening to my inner voice, slaughters the fucking science every single time. Every single fucking time. I'm so sick of the science about everything when it comes to hard training. I'm so sick of the compromise that's being made about what is hard training. You know, when I was a kid, guys went to the gym and trained as hard as they could, as long as they could, every day simply because they loved it. They enjoyed it. There was nothing that was difficult about the doing of it other than pushing themselves as hard as they could. And today, all you hear is discussion about how to find an easy way, a comfortable fucking way to do what needs to be hard. Instead of that kind of shit, why don't you work on engaging a love for what is hard and difficult and challenging. Try that. Try that shoe on and see if it fucking fits. On those days when I spend most of my time, four, five, six hours in front of a computer monitor doing stuff that I uh, feel like something's been sucked out of me. That's why I say it's important to get outside and get active and use your body hard, really just intensely, you know, and Sustain that as a habit. I mean, a lot of guys, I correspond with a lot of guys over the years um, about, you know, they, they sort of just give it all up. They just let it go, you know, not just how they physically look, but their 
uh, being able to summons up the the energy and the intensity, the aggressiveness to get out there and really use their body, and that's just not a good thing to do. Look, <clears throat> in doing these videos, I want to make it clear that we're not just talking about exercise here, how to get your exercise act together. It's a big part of it. It's been a big part of my life. Turned my life around years ago when I was in high school and stumbled into the weight room, a great story. Um, but it's about how to get your life act together. And last Friday, I do this in bits and pieces, and I talk in general ideas, broad ideas, and you can break it down and you can get into details and specific and the practical things you can do to make your life work. And we're going to do that over time. There's only so much you can do in one video, and I go on for 5, 10, 15 minutes anyway. So, uh, <clears throat> and I am intense and passionate about life. That thing, that one thing, I am intense and impassionate about life, having life, wake, waking up every morning, having my eyes waken, and having an, another shot at this incredible experience of life. I just don't get it how people aren't intense and passionate about that. So many people are just dragging themselves through life. I don't want to be around people like that. I'm not inspired by people like that. That's not what you're going to get from me. There's a misunderstanding. Some of you think that I'm angry or I'm upset or I've got some issues I need to have resolved because I express myself in the way that I do. The explosive, chest out, uh, in your face, bold, blunt, no bullshit way. No, I'm intense and passionate about life and getting the most I can out of it for the number of years that I have. And I've always been like that. I said before, and if you're just coming around new, just found out that I'm not dead with the, you know Twitter and the social media stuff and Facebook, then you're going to have to do some digging around to find out who I really am, what I'm all about. Those of you who have been coming around for years, you know that. Uh, but if you're coming here new and you only have a picture in your head of the 1990s version of Ultimate Warrior and you're thinking um, as a kid what you thought that, that person, that human being would be like, then you're, just, you're in the wrong place. And you're going to have to bring yourself up to speed or you're going to have to sit back and you're going to have to take a breath and you're going to let me, let me do it for you in the videos and the stuff I can do. Um, uh, so anyway, on Friday when I cut my video and I talked about a number of things, first of all, there were people that seemed to think I was saying to quit your job. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how the fuck you could get that out of what I said. When I was talking about a job opportunity versus life opportunity, I wasn't telling anybody to quit their job. I just was trying to relate to you that I think your life is worth more than just a fucking job. I think that you came here to do something unique. You have something creative in you that's unique where you can make your life work on your own terms. Call your own shots. Be your own boss. Be your own operator. I believe that. I believe that about every human being. I just don't believe it about myself. I'm not sitting here saying to you, you know, hey, I'm up on a pedestal, look how great I am, you can't do it, you know, this isn't the lifetime for you, maybe next lifetime. So many other people do that. I never, I don't believe that about anybody. I believe people make their choices, they end up in shitty places in their life, but I believe nobody, there is not one human being that was ever born without, absent the potential to do something great in their life. Um, yesterday was Monday. I made the comment last week in my video on Friday that if it's the end of the week and you took a, a huge uh, breath, sigh of relief that the week was over and you're, you were off for a couple of days, you didn't have to go back to your job, then I said, you're not doing what you should be doing in your life. You're not working on your true life's purpose, what you really came here to do. And yesterday was Monday. If you woke up on Monday morning and you were in a crappy mood and you were grumpy and you were you know, whining and complaining and bitching and moaning that you had to go back out in the workplace for another five days and work your 40, 50, 60 hours a week work week to get your paycheck, to pay your bills, to buy you the things that really don't make you happy except for the amount of the, the short period of time while you're shopping for them, put gas in your car to take you places to be around people that you really don't want to be around. Go places where you don't really want to go, then you're not doing what you should be doing, and you need to look at that. So about that, I just wanted to say a couple things, give you a couple thoughts and ideas. About, I made the suggestion on Friday that you get off by yourself, you take a notepad, a notebook, pencil and pen, and you start putting your visions, your dreams, your thoughts, your ideas 
uh, your mumblings, your grumbling, grumblings, what you think is positive, what you think is negative, what kind of, if you're a single guy and you want to one day have a family, you want to have a beautiful wife, you want to have a beautiful home, um, a beautiful material thing, start putting that stuff down on paper. Look, we all have moments of brilliance in our lives. We, most people live two lives. They live this fantasy life in their head, this dreamy life where everything's perfect, everything's incredible, everything is just, just absolutely awesome. And then they live this life that they get up and face every day, this life of reality. And they bitch and moan and they whine and complain about that. But you can't just have a vague idea about what, that you want to be successful. I want to be successful and maybe be able to point to a celebrity or entertainer or an athlete, a professional athlete or some other public figure and say, I'd like to be successful like that. You can't just say, I just, I want to be rich without having some idea of what rich is for you, what rich would be for you. You can't just say, I want to have really other really nice, expensive material possessions. Okay, what? You got to be able to answer that. And so instead of having all this parts unknown, outer space, battle going on in your head where your ideas just float around and there's never no record of them and you don't put them down someplace so you can go and look at them you can be reminded about what you're thinking where you want to go what your goals are in life get them down on paper that's what I mean and I don't mean spend five minutes at the very least you should spend three hours three hours at the least at, at a minimum you should sit in silence without any distractions whatsoever fight the distractions and that will be hard for people to do today because people constantly want to be engaged by something. They can't stand to have silence. They can't stand to have only their, their, their own thoughts to themselves and nobody else around to, to busy up their minds. Sit for three hours and put it all down, everything about what you want to do. It's important to do that because you need to give some definition to what your goals are, some specificity and detail to what you actually want out of your life, what you actually want to be doing with your life to make you happy so that you wake up every day and you're excited and enthusiastic about, yes, 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 this is killer. That's the way, I mean, this is the way that you should wake up and want to engage life. I mean, show me, somebody show me, prove it to me. It's like the proof I've been looking for for years so that somebody would provide to me that I have self-destructed. Somebody provide me the proof where your life is supposed to be nothing but just drudgery. Where you came here and you, there's no way out of some obligation that you needed to sign on, sign on for what was mundane, routine, bored, uh, boring, and, and, and just generic. Where is it? Provide it to me. And I will post it on Facebook. Every day at the beginning of the day, I'll put it on Facebook, I put it on Twitter. I say I was wrong, and I will apologize. Another reason, look, <clears throat> putting stuff down on paper like that, it's a, it's a strategy, it's a technique, it's a thing that successful people do. Pick up some books and start reading about the success of other people. You're going to have to start building your own library. And pretty soon, and I did this before already through my blog, I had book list suggestions. Those are going to be coming back. We'll discuss books over time once we get up and running full-blown Ultimate Warrior Speed around here. But it's a thing that they do. They put things down on paper. They carry, I carry a recorder with me. I carry a notebook with me. If I come up with an idea and think, yeah, man, that would be awesome. I need to do that. I need to get a record of it because by the time I get back to where paper and pencil are, I'm going to forget about it. I mean, it's not even going to be a distant memory anymore. And when you get all this stuff down on paper, then you can start organizing it. Instead of just having all these ideas and thoughts and dreams and fantasies and visions and everything bouncing around the walls of your skull. You can have them on paper and you can start moving the pieces of the puzzle around. Because success at big goals in life don't just fall from the sky. You got to take steps, you got to plan.